states. OK, um, this evening I th thought about when they asked me to, to do a team night. And uh, I was trying to come up with what I should talk about. And uh, for a while now, I've been trying to put together a philosophy of ministry for the youth group. And uh, so that's basically what I'm going to lay out for us tonight. Uh, but it's got a lot of practical things in there that are good for all of us in our uh, Christian walk. Um, it's, it's been two years now, almost, almost to the week, I think, where uh, Diane and I took over the youth group and uh, started leading that. And, and I've learned a lot. And I've learned that I still need to learn a lot. Um, that is, that is the, the biggest thing I've learned. And, uh, you know, we've I've gone through and put some messages together. We've gone through a, a, a big 35-lesson series on uh, Pilgrim's Progress, which is the Christian adventure. Uh, we, we went through all that, and, and um, just as I started getting into it and started doing more things, and, and there's I know God's given me a burden in my heart for what I'd like to see the teens more or less be prepared for when they're no longer teens. And, uh, and I just was like, well, how do I do that? So I need a plan. I need a, a, a purpose to do that. Um, you know, I do, uh, I asked the teens a couple of weeks ago, I said, I, you know, I, I cover you with prayers. And they told me it was wrong to covet. <laughs> I said, no, prayers are good to covet. That's not on the list of things I shouldn't covet. So, uh, um, but let me, uh, first of all, as a youth leader, I'm, I'm here to be a help to the parents who are here, uh, to your kids. I'm not, I shouldn't be the lead spiritual leader for your, for your ch children. I'm there to, to help support what should be going on in your health, and I want to be a help. So if there's any way I can ever be a help, and, and everybody else here... You know, you see us raising our families. We are trying to do our best. Um, we definitely could use some help in, in that regards of, of things that you've learned is raising your kids that could help us in, in bringing our kids up and helping them to uh, grow in the faith and live in the faith. Um, so I, I know that for those who don't have parents who are believers, that we are going to be the lead uh, example for them of what it is to be a Christian and that we will be a testimony for them, not just Diane and I, but really all of us here in this church. Um, you know, we're all being watched one way or another, even by other believers are watching other believers to see, you know, well, what's my future hold? What do I see coming? How, what can I do more? Um, so I really started looking at the youth group and what we have and what to do, and, and God's given me some great resources of, where to go and what to do and how to kind of organize this. Um, I had a good uh, a, a idea of how to kind of explain this, but let's say we, you and I go to Dick's Sporting Goods, and, uh, and I go there and I grab a bow and I grab a bunch of arrows, buy those, you know, we go find a field somewhere, and uh, I grab that bow, get the tags off of it, open up those arrows, grab one, pull it back, shoot it. I go, Perfect. Did you see that? Right on. You know, I grab another one, I aim it this way, and I shoot it that way. And I just, and you're kind of scratching your head, and I just keep grabbing them and shooting them and grabbing them and shooting them, and finally I'm out of arrows, you know, and I'm like, man, that was great, you know. And you, and you just go, well, what would you hit? And I say, nothing. And they go, well, why was that so great? It's like, because that's what I was aiming for. And uh, I, I had a good pastor friend that, that he used to say that all the time, is if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. And... Uh, that's kind of what I've realized with the youth group is, well, what are we doing? Why are we doing it? And uh, what's, what's its plan? What's its purpose? Um, so I've, I've come up with a, um, a God-focused or a God-centered youth program. Um, and a lot of this is a lot of help from, from other people who've, who've done youth programs before and and, uh, and, you know, I've, kind of, I've more or less personalized it for, for us, which I think is important. Because if it's personalized, then it's real to me, and then I want to do it, and I want to live it, and I want to uh, make it work. So if I borrowed it, then, well, whatever, that one didn't work. Next, let's try this one, you know. Um, so uh, Colossians 3.22, and I'm going to be kind of all over in the Bible. 
um, several verses that I have here. So if you want to follow along, I'll try to give you a, a heads up. But uh, Colossians 3.2, I'm sorry, is where I'm going to start uh, and is uh, the, the real focus of the message and our, our youth program. Colossians 3.22 just said, 3.2, set your affections on, thing above, on things above, not on things on the earth. And uh, Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So simple things, but, but it's, it's helping us to focus, to get our eyes off of what's around us, but then focus up ahead, you know, on God and on him and in his word and in his ways. Um, so it's three simple points, faith, fear, and uh, following. Is, is the points I'm going to hit tonight. And, uh, and I'm going to start with faith. Um, first of all, we want to see new faith. You know, those who come to our youth group who don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, we want to win them. Uh, we want to have every opportunity to share the gospel with them and to share it and have our teens also equipped and not be afraid to share it. Um, but, you know, we want to see new life in Christ. Um, I think that's really going to be a focus of this church here coming in the, in the next, and it should be our focus always, to share the gospel with the lost. So that is our number one goal, is let's see them come to new uh, believing faith. Let's have them realize what the gospel is, that Jesus came, lived that perfect life that we could never live. He died on the cross for our sins, was buried and rose again. You know, he's sitting on a high. He's got a free gift for us of salvation. And, and we want everybody who comes into our youth group or comes into this church to know that free gift, to know what the gospel is, to know how important it is, um, and to know that they can go to heaven. You, you know, the, the, the gifts that God has given us um, through salvation you know, the peace that he gives, the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, gentleness, goodness, um, self-control, all of that is part of the wonderful gift of salvation. And uh, it is way more than the, the simple ticket to heaven that, you know, well, I've got it, I can still go live like the devil. No, it's, it's way more than that. And, um, you know, Romans... 116 for it says for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek so that's that's our, our first thing there is new faith now also an assurance of faith we get many teens and um, you know the, the wilds is one thing we really like going there is because they they kind of nail all of this there when we bring the teens it's it's so God-saturated, it's so gospel-saturated and God-saturated that, you know, you really have that time to think and understand where you're at in your Christian walk. And, uh, and they have great counselors there, and they just run a really great program. Plus, you're not distracted by TV or cell phones or computers or really anything. I mean, it's, it's just, let's, let's see where you are. Here's a week, and, let's, and let's, let's learn about God, and let's learn about you and where you're at. So um, that is one of the reasons we have such, uh, why we yearly go to the wilds, you know, because we've seen teens come back on fire for the Lord, and that fire stay in their hearts. Um, you know, but that's also something I would like to be cultivating and continuing through our teens throughout the year, you know, is, is continue on. You know, you came back with that fire from the wilds, now let's, let's stoke it, let's get it going more, let's keep it going and, uh, and see great things happen. Um, but yeah, at times there's, there's assurance of faith, somebody who, who's not sure, well, I think I did something, and I'm, but I'm not really sure, and, and that's also um, what we want to, to help and, uh, and see them have that assurance in their faith. Because when they're strong and confident in their faith, then when they leave our youth group, when they get into adulthood, they're going to stay strong, good Christians, uh, serving in the church and, and, and keeping their lives from being wrecked by sin. Um, you know, James 2.18 says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. 
show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So we want to see the faith real in, in, the, in the teens. So, um, and then living by faith would be the other um, thing that we're, we're going to challenge them to do. Um, Romans 1.17, for, there, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So that's our number one goal. Souls saved, um, their hearts changed, and then following and, and a confidence in that. Um, and then fear. Um, so many youth groups, so many youth leaders, I guess. And I know I think even I've been uh, to a certain degree at fault for doing this. Um, we all push our favorite do's and don'ts. And uh, do this, don't do that. You know, there's something you may have a, a, a specific, you know, I had a, a good friend who was our youth leader for a few years and he just, he couldn't stand rock music and, and just constantly he and harped on that of get rid of the music, get rid of the music, get rid of the music, you know, and music is bad, the music, and, and I agree, but there was never any, it, it, his don't do that overrode anything else of why not to do that or what not to do. So, um, you know, but you, you run the gamut of, you know, the, the, the rock music or TV shows. Don't watch those bad TV shows. Don't go to those bad movies. Watch what you wear. Uh, watch what you say. Watch what you do or, and, and all that. Um, and, but there's also the, the, the flip side is, you know, well, teens, read your Bible and pray and witness and dress right. You know, all those outward appearance things that youth leaders and, and a lot of people can, can get into the, um, the idea of, of pushing do this and don't do that, uh, but never really a reason why to do them. And uh, Psalm 111, 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. So it's the fear of the Lord. It's a proper fear of the Lord. And, uh, you know, I, I've thought of this a lot, of, you know, back 100 years ago, maybe 150 years ago, people were known as God-fearing men and women. You know, it was, they lived their lives, no matter who they met with and, and dealt with, those people were known as God-fearing men and women. And... Uh, <laughs> And, and I really wonder what happened to them. What, you know, do, are we known as God-fearing men and women in our communities and the people that we know, family, friends, neighbors, coworkers? Do we, do we have that proper fear um, of God? And it is a proper fear. Um, it, it's, it's not a, I'm afraid God's going to strike lightning down or whatever. You know, I know that's, that's a lot of... Uh, of what people fear. If I go in that church, the walls will collapse or the ceiling will cave in, you know, all wrong thoughts on the fear of God. And, uh, um, you know, I ask, well, what, you know, to a certain degree, what defines a God-fearing person? And uh, I, I, looked, I looked to Spurgeon. I looked to somebody from more than 100 years ago and, and to see what he says. And, and um, Spurgeon wrote and preached, uh, but dear friends, there, there's another fear, and this is fear for Christians, um, that ought to be cultivated. The reverential fear which the holy angels feel when they worship God and they behold his glory. That gracious fear which makes them veil their faces with their wings as they adore the majesty on high. There is also the loving fear which every true, right-hearted child has towards its father, a fear of grieving so tender a parent, a proper feeling of dread which makes it watch its every footstep, lest in the slightest degree it should deviate from the path of absolute obedience. May God graciously grant to us much of this kind of fear. And I think that just nails it. You know, too many times we're trying to skirt to the other edge, you know, instead of staying in the dead center, we're trying to, well, is this okay? Well, is this okay? Well, is this okay? You know, am I still okay? You know, we, tr we try to, to, we're trying to whether bend the rules or whatever, but we're not trying our, our best 
And we all fail. And this is, I'm throwing myself under the bus too, that this is, this is things that I do and, and fail at too, is um, I want to walk that walk that, that's a center and, and God-focused and straight down the line. Um, but, you know, that's a daily act of going to the Lord in prayer, going to Him for His grace, and uh, doing what He wants me to do, and, and, and all of that because of the proper fear, the fear that you would have for a perfect father. You know, we all have imperfect fathers that, that one way or another, we've, we've feared in our lives. Um, you know, my dad was a six foot four Vietnam veteran, and uh, I, I remember I had lied, I had a paper route, and I had lied about having paid my bill for it. You know, so I was behind and not very good with money at 14 years old, 15 maybe. I remember coming home and, and, and I got, I was on the bus, school bus coming home from school and I just had this sense that I'm, bus goes up the road, comes back down the road. When I hit the first road, I knew something was wrong. It was, it was weird, but you know, and I got home and, and uh, you know, my dad made it clear that I should never lie to him again. <laughs> and uh, you know, that was, but we have a God, a father, who's a perfect father, and, and, and he's patient, and he's loving, and he's kind, um, but we shouldn't take advantage of that. We should honor him and, and live a life, and, uh, you know, there's nothing we can hide from him. There isn't. You know, our earthly fathers, yes, there, there is stuff that we have hidden from them, but for God, we can hide nothing, and he knows our hearts. He knows our thoughts, and... Uh, you know, to, to have a proper fear of, of just disappointing him. Um, you know, that, that should help us. And that's, and that's the reason to do or not do the things that we're, you know, harping on, of whether it's reading your Bible or praying, um, or building that relationship with, with God that we're supposed to have. Um, that's... The reason is to, to fear the Lord, to honor that our, our godly Father. So, um, you know, but when you there, there's another there is another fear that when you're not His child, um, and that is is perfectly explained in Matthew ten twenty eight, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not a, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear Him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And, uh, y you know, when, when we can put that to our mind, when we have the confidence in our, in our salvation, then we can go and share the gospel with others, realizing that, hey, there, you know, there's a God who's, who they should be fearing because he can throw their body and soul into hell. And, uh, and we shouldn't want that for anybody. So, um, but if, you know, if there is anybody here who, who doesn't, know God as your Lord and Savior. Um, yeah, there is a different fear we should have. Um, and, uh, but it, but it, that's a good fear. Um, you know, uh, and again, going back to the fear of God when you are his child, when you are saved, when God is your father. Psalm 147.11 says, The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, and those who hope in his mercy. And... Uh, Proverbs 28, 14, happy is a man that feareth alway. So just verses that just clearly stick out. And there's a lot. When you, when you look at what fear the Lord or, or, or look up the word fear, a lot of verses come up. You know, I'm just, I'm just kind of glancing over a few of them here and, and describing what uh, we're going to do. But, you know, as, as I present to the teens and challenge them, Hey, you know, read your Bible more, pray more. Um, you know, I, I had now have a reason to encourage them to do that instead of just trying to please me or trying to please their parents or um, to do it to just do it as a checklist, but to but to do it for for a heartfelt reason to honor God their Father. Um, I also, you know, hope to do in prepare messages that teach and aim for the heart. Not emotional heart change, but when you, when 
lessons when God's word hits the heart. Um, and that's only by God's grace and only by the Holy Spirit doing that. That's not going to be anything that I'm going to be able to take credit for. Um, but when it hits the heart, it changes my mind, emotions, and will. Uh, it's so easy to, to, to preach and teach stuff, um, but if it only goes into the head, then it hasn't, it, it takes longer to, to trickle down and do. But if it hits the heart, that's where things change. That's where um, God's power through his word changes the heart and uh, changes the will. God's, God's power changes the wills. And, uh, and then it becomes God who makes the real change in their life. So that's something I still need to learn, um, something I need to study. Something, it, that's, and, and I'm contradicting myself right there. I need to pray more, and, and that's the key. The more I pray, the more I um, submit this to the Lord, submit the message to the Lord, look to the Lord for the message, um, then he has the power his Holy Spirit can go into the hearts and change the hearts, and uh, which again changes the mind, emotions, and will. Real change is made, permanent change, godly change. So, um, Deuteronomy 13 4, you shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And First uh, John 5, 2 and 3, By this we know the love of the children. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. So that's encouraging as well that, you know, God doesn't make it hard. Um, he gives us the power to do what he wants to do in us. And uh, so that's, that's the, the fear part of it. Um, not that I'm going to be up there demanding, you do this, and you, you know, I'm not that kind of guy. Um, follow is part three. Um, and that's really in, in serving the Lord. You know, I, I want to have opportunities for the teens to serve. And they have a lot of opportunities, and they do serve in here. Um, you know, the teens helped us a lot when we did last year's VBS program. Um, they were all parts of that. They all helped weekly with expeditions in uh, helping with the games. Uh, the, most of them are in the choir. Excuse me, we see a couple of them in the orchestra. We've got Elias who works in the sound booth. Um, they work in the nursery, they work in junior church, and there's, and there's more areas th that they're in uh, serving here already. And, uh, you know, that's, that's an encouragement. That's what Jesus did. Be Christ-like. Be, be serving. And, uh, and there's more I want to do with that. You know, there, there's other ideas. There's, there's things we'd like to do. And uh, maybe a missions trip and go run a VBS somewhere, some, you know, someday. Or, you know, there, there's a lot of ideas we have. And... We'll wait for, for Pastor Doyle to get here and, and uh, get with him and figure out a plan for, for what we can do. And, um, but, you know, we're also um, um, the Bible says only, you know, only one master allowed. And uh, if we're going to follow Christ and we need to leave other things behind. Um, the Bible says no man can serve two masters for either will, he either will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And mammon's usually money and stuff, but really you could almost put a fill in the blank there. You can't serve God and what? Yourself. I mean, that, that's probably one that we all have an issue with. We put ourself and our comfort uh, in the way more of serving God than uh, probably most of all other things. You know, it's easy to, I can let go of TV, I can let go of movies, I can let go of music, you know, but can you let go of yourself? Um, that's a hard one, you know, for all of us. I mean, that's, I'm right there with us saying that. Um, but, you know, what's going to last, you know? Um, we need to hang on to this world loosely, really just let it go and, uh, you know, and die daily to ourselves and, and be a vessel, be a sacrifice, be a living sacrifice for God.
So, um, you know, that's that's our our goal there. Um, Psalm 102 for for the following and serving: Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing, and uh, and that's again what I hope to do there, and uh, and go with that. So, I. I now have a target, you know, with the bow and arrows. Um, I can't just shoot them around anywhere I want to. I've got a target now, okay? And now I need to practice, and now I need to work at it and get better at it, you know? As, as I first start, yeah, I'm, I'm, I may miss the target, you know, but then eventually those arrows will start hitting that target. Um, and then after that, maybe I start hitting the bullseye, you know? So there's, there's things that God's going to teach me. There's things that I'm going to learn. Um, some of it's going to be hard, I know that. And, uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going on. Um, Hebrews 13, 7, As obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they that must give an account. And, and that stands out to me right there, that uh, for they watch for your souls that they, as they that must give an account. Um, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. So, you know, I'm going to give an account for, number one, my family, number two, the youth group, and whatever else the Lord gives me, um, I'm going to give an account for it. So I have to have the proper attitude. I have to do the things that God wants me to do. I have to be the example um, that I am telling and, and trying to encourage the teens to be. So, um, you know, day in and day out. It's not, I don't become a different person when I leave here. Um, but it's always follow God and, and honor him and live for him. Um, so help me, um, encourage us. You know, these teens have a lot of challenges in the world, you know, thankfully most of them go to the school here. Um, but, you know, we're seeing a couple of them now, or we got half of them probably are, are in one form or another public school, whether college or, or high school. And, you know, the peer pressure is real and it's tough. And, uh, you know, Satan wants nothing better than to, to devour these teens, to wreck their lives. And, uh, and I want to see them all become the best of what God has for them. Um, you know, God has, has a great plan for their lives. Um, I don't know what it is. None of us do. Uh, they probably don't. But, you know, we've got to just encourage them. We've got to um, be the example for them and, and just help them to, to realize that everything that Satan offers has a bad end. And... Uh, you know, that sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. So, you know, my heart's burden for the teens to, to stay right in the Lord uh, throughout their lives, uh, to find the right mate that God has for them, to, you know, the right job that he has for them, whatever, whatever it may be. You know, maybe we've got some missionary kids here. I don't know. You know, God does. Um, but I want to equip them as best I can, encourage them the best I can, and, uh, and have the right reasons for doing it, for doing all of it. So um, thank you for coming out. Thank you for being a part of our lives, being an example that you all have been. And, uh, and just pray that, uh, that you would help us and, and may we be a blessing to you all. Let's uh, close in prayer. Father, we do thank you.